to introduce uh, Sara Irico. Uh, she is researcher at Dickerhoff uh, since uh, 2015. And currently she is involved in the Lord Tennis Project and in, in other research topics like uh, concrete durability. Uh, she got a PhD in collaboration with uh, Bootsy Unitem and working on, on multifunctional uh, innovative concrete um, like self-healing technology and so on. So what do you want? Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to me to uh, take this presentation on Marco Francini behalf of my colleague, uh, which cannot be here for some important uh, business, uh, business meeting. And uh, the topic of uh, the presentation that was prepared from Marco Francini is the expectancies from internal curing in concrete for macro, uh, from a concrete producer point of view. So let's talking about uh, cracking in concrete. So what is the cracking in concrete? Probably is the cracking perhaps the most important defect of a concrete structure. And we can have a lot of different kind of cracking that can be produced in concrete, such you can see in some picture here that was reported from practical experience. So we can have early essication cracks in the, er in the early stage in some minutes, but we can also have uh, cracking due to uh, self essication of dry essication after hours, so minutes or even days. And then also you can have also some thermal crack that can be also formed in the case of bulk concrete with the, uh, in which the, uh, the temperature arises in a, in a different uh, gradients inside the concrete structure and they can produce some thermal cracks. But what is important to highlight that uh, even if it's one of the most important effects in concrete, this at the same time is one of the most neglected factor, even from the customer. So in the as it was reported here, cracks are almost never direct subject of a technical prescription. So the customer are asking for performance, but no information they will got about how the concrete has a tendency to cracks. And this is one of the main important to keep in mind in this presentation. So what we can do to avoiding cracks and uh, which are the factor that we can uh, govern or we can handle. So uh, we can have um, potential shrinkage of concrete that can produce cracks. And this is much more related to the material technology. So we can handle with a good material technology or different kind of material. But you can also reduce uh, the shrinkage by early curing. And this is much more related to construction phases and how to handle the curing condition during the casting of concrete. And um, you can have also, as I, I showed you already before in, in the picture of the example, you can have also effect on shrinkage in a long-term maturation. And this is called in, in a technical way the exercise phases of the infrastructure. But of course, you can also have some cost strains and deformation of the structure over the time. And this is basically due to the structural design, some fatigue on some loads that you can have during the lifetime of a structure. So, but um, what is, was interesting also for me to, to know that rarely a designer knows all the link and the relation between all these factors I showed you before. And uh, usually, also a designer is not able to prescribe the right things that you can do in order to avoid all this crack. And uh, as also another interesting point of view, it's also even the current uh, European standard don't address any issue about cracks. And so uh, we can therefore understand, as the colleague here report, why it's so difficult to get out of the problem to, to handle the problem, even from different point of view, cr uh, concrete producer, designer, uh, and, and, and all the, the people involved in a, in a project, in a design. So some expert designer uh, can prescribe some action that can be done to prevent cracks. So low potential shrinkage or some curing action to, to prevent it, but it, even it's if, if without also making some modeling or calculation, we discussed it before about some modeling tools that also you're using to predict durability. But also what is done in the praxis basically is just lead to some experience of the, the concrete producer or the designer actually. 
the uh, report is some uh, uh, picture from our practice. So you, what you can do is, uh, uh, if as a curing prevention, so to, to um, put an anti-evaporation film on the, on the top of the surface to avoid the desiccation, or just to, uh, to put a waterproof sheets, polymeric uh, uh, sheets, or you can also do in some cases, not all, but in some cases you can also have a water cover uh, curing to prevent desiccation. This is a, um, an example, a positive example from Unical uh, technology has been done in, Milan, in, in Milano. This is the Allens Tower. has been done with a low heat and low shrinkage concrete and uh, uh, allowed the designer to replace the planned giant steel submit belt thrust with a high performance concrete beam. So basically you can design, you can see here they, they design a concrete with some speci uh, special technical requirements in order to achieve the, the requirements to reduce as much as possible early age cracking and some cracking at the long stage too. This is also uh, a positive example based on curing. So we saw before in this case they manage uh, on the concrete technology. So we are discussing the end on the material, what we can do on material technology. But here we have a, an example in, in uh, how um, the UNICAL group handled the problem of preventing cracking by the curing uh, technology. So in this case was a, a very big uh, monolithic foundation cast and uh, there was, uh, has been done in Italy in a pet food, uh, pet food uh, plant producer. And this is a, uh, is a bulk concrete, as we can say, so the requirements was a low heat cement actually, but you can, uh, in, some, in some cases not all, but in this case was possible because the, the company had a source of warm water there. And so it was possible even to make a bulk concrete without using a low heat uh, cement, but just using Portland cement, but to cure in the surface of the concrete with the warm water. So in this case, you can prevent the gradient of temperature and then you solve thermal cracking and also desiccation due to the evaporation of, of water of the concrete. We have here another example, uh, quite a big set example, but uh, it's just to show you, uh, then um, the colleague want to highlight um, how the cracking is one of the most effect, uh, that it also uh, can uh, under, undetermine the trust of the community in concrete because the cracks you can see and uh, when you see cracks you're always just saying immediately the concrete is not good or what happened in the structure is not so durable anymore um, and um, as you can see here the colleague um, want to up uh, uh, highlight that the about the, this this point uh, this this, mm, this bridge in Genoa, actually the material was quite good. It was not a problem because the material was a bad material because the compressive strengths they were uh, quite good for that time. But the problem was here that it was an was this the structure was uh, inadequate to protect the iron, and due to the cracks they have developed in fifty here, so there was a maintenance problem here, basically not exactly a material. So this is also, and this is um, the reconstruction project is planned now and um, in which a lot of steel will be used extensively instead of concrete at the moment. It's, it's an ongoing designer, it's not fixed I guess at the moment, they are under discussion, but even in this case the concrete has not been able to show itself to the public opinion as a protective and discontinuously free product that could be, ins they could instead be. So the, maybe the public opinion tend to move to other solution, as, uh, for example, to put much more steel in s uh, such a structure instead of concrete, because also for the public opinion, start to think about maybe the concrete is not the best solution to move uh, to, to other solution. And so it is also a problem how to communicate and to discuss with the public opinion and the public infrastructure, how the, the, the concrete can be, can be good for this. So um, let's talk then uh, what we can do, what the research can do together with practical experience. So the internal curing is considered, and uh, we know as researcher, can be one of the most interesting and promising solution for the concrete producer too. But even together with the designer in order to prescribe and to design some more durable infrastructure. 
and the most innovative self-curing and self -healing te also self-healing technology, uh, if they can prove to be effective in some real case condition, could be also as a uh, lever to promote a new use of concrete and also to be confident of it. One of the problem we have now is to prove the function of this technology in such real condition, even because it's difficult to simulate in the lab, we know. But reducing the importance of external curing and so uh, will also reduce uh, in, um, will also result in facilitating the designer in the, in the shores of some technology related to material or some curing technology. And uh, if there are other solutions bas based on some uh, self-curing or material which is can be uh, self-preventing also uh, will help a designer to, to, uh, to define the performance just of the, con uh, the, the performance that the concrete technologies ask, not to, so will make the work of a, pro a designer even easier to not think about how can I handle a curing or something like that if a concrete is able to uh, protect uh, himself or the self responsive in a, such an environmental uh, condition. And I found it also interesting that uh, the colleague reports also that the current technology that reduce the concrete shrinkage, for example, from higher than 500 micro strain, uh, less than 200 micro strain, at the moment increase the cost of the pro product by 20%. And uh, sometimes it's something that, uh, as a researcher, we don't think so much about that, how uh, a new solution can increase the cost because it uh, must be also like that because we are searching for innovative solution. But it's also important from a concrete producer point of view to understand how it's the state of the arts now. So to conclude, um, we need to set some goal and to, uh, as uh, I will report exactly what the colleague would like to say, to transform the great strides of material technology into actual results in the real buildings. And so uh, what we can do, what is the point that we, as concrete producer, we want to, to discuss in this, uh, in this workshop, to decrease as much as possible the amount of residual string cage and make it easy to predict and to guarantee the durability. Um, also know and predict the real effectiveness of self-curing system even in condition very far from the standard one. It's also another good point of uh, discussion. But also, I mean, it's also important to promote the request of minimum performance. We discussed it also before in the presentation before um, some requirements are just now based on the compressive strength and something that we can measure. But how can be also re requirements related to durability? It's also difficult uh, to handle, but uh, also some practical concrete producer ask this and uh, the, the question came out. Uh, so also the last point is to develop forecasting calculation model to allow prescribing string cage limits with a reliable prediction of cracking risk in the structure. What we can do also for this is also a good point of discussion. As I think it's all from my side and uh, open the discussion for any questions. Thank you. Complimenti, Sara. Now we go ahead with